Hello everyone and welcome to the Elder Scrolls Guides with me, Eros Crypto, Crypto Gamer. And today guys, we are going to be looking at the endless dungeon known as the Infinite Archive, which was included within the base game during the chapter release for Necrom. If you do enjoy the video, please like, share and subscribe and leave a comment and let me know what you think. So guys, to travel to the Infinite Archive, all you need to do is come to a way shrine and go to Apocrypha here and as you can see this little symbol here is the infinite archive as far as i know this is the only way that you can actually travel directly in now once you're inside guys there is multiple things to take note of within the infinite archive there are two vendors that i will be showing you in a moment and a daily quest giver if you ever want to exit the infinite archive you can exit through the portal here and this will take you to wherever you were last unless you were in pvp of course then it'll be the last zone that you were in the daily quest giver is also known as Master Malchest, and he will give you the quest to fight one of the main bosses, or the main boss of the Infinite Archive, known as Stoat Replicanum, which we will get to near the end of the video. I will even be showing you how to actually defeat her as well within her first iteration. Once you've completed that daily quest, you can always exit out and hand in the quest, which we will be doing. There are bits of lore around the Infinite Archive, being it is the realm of knowledge and books and this is the first main vendor by the way guys so this is Fire O, and he is a weekly vendor that will reset every Tuesday just like the vendor in the Scalarium you will uh, change different things out including scripts so this is a good way to get either shoulder pieces like the Grothdar shoulder piece here this vendor will also be selling companion gear, sometimes it's jewelry or sometimes it's armor pieces or even weapons. You can also grab decks here for your Tales of Tribute, but I wouldn't waste your archival fortunes on that. You can also get scripts here, although usually you will be able to find these from dailies in general and you will also be able to buy most of these from the Scalarium. So I, unless there's something that you really, really like, I wouldn't bother buying uh, scripts. And you can also get archival fragments for the Malagrific uh, Mount, which is an achievement within the Infinite Archive, which will give you basically a mount that will look very similar to Hermaeus Mora, but in horse form. And as you can see, they've got a fantastic little animation here to go up to the next vendor, which I thought was quite cool. And this vendor has got set things from the Infinite Archive that are general rewards. You can buy containers full of raw materials using your archival fortunes, but unless you are getting a fair amount of them, this is not the best way to accrue a lot of money, although it can be done, I have seen videos on it, but you have to have a lot of archival fortunes to make it profitable. Along with the update that brought the Infinite Archive, they also released um, class sets. Now these class sets also have their own unique styles, but these styles can only be worn by a particular class. So for example, if it's an Arcanist, only the Arcanist will be able to use it. Along with the actual set pieces as well, which yet again can only be used by the individual class that it's designed for. The current sets with this current update in 43 here, the sets aren't that good overall, but the next update, update 43, that is actually going to be quite good with its set upgrades. So keep an eye out for that and save your archival fortunes. You can also get through achievements um, the furnishings depending on how well you do in the Infinite Archive and you can even get yourself a small replica of the actual Infinite Archive itself which is very very cool. Personally I'm a big fan of the housing and I would really like a miniature version of this for my house. I think it would be very smart indeed. So guys what you're also going to find out is that um, you can buy verses here, which will give you a bonus verse for each round that when you use it. You can only use one per round, and there's also an upgrade system as well that you can get once you've completed certain milestones within the Infinite Archive. In the next update, as far as I'm aware, they are actually going to be giving you an upgrade that will give you a permanent Watcher pet that you can use within the Infinite Archive. Now, if this is used along a pet build and a companion, if you're using a Sork, this could be an incredibly powerful asset to get way farther within the Infinite Archive, along with a few verses and visions that will be giving you pets as well. So now what we'll do is we will enter into the 
archive if you ever want to leave that portal to your right over here that will take you straight back to the infinite archive base and once you step into this circle here the round begins so guys there are three rounds to a stage which is three waves in effect and then you will complete that stage then there are three stages in total before you complete a cycle and then once you have completed four cycles you will complete one arc which means you will be facing against the at replicanium so at the end of the third stage you will basically be fighting a boss now something very very important to understand about the infinite archive is the infinite archive will teach you mechanics for most of the bosses within the game some of these will be overworld bosses some of these will be dungeon bosses and some of these will be trial bosses along with that once you've completed a certain number of stages and arcs you will eventually meet several new major bosses within these smaller rounds called marauders you have elemental marauders as well as two new marauders that will be coming out which will be a werewolf and a minotaur so what do i like about the infinite archive guys i think it's a really really good way of teaching you as i say new mechanics for different bosses and it's also a good way of leveling up if you feel like doing that now obviously if you're playing the game for the first time do not just jump into the infinite archive and level up your character that way because you're not going to really be exploring or enjoying the leveling up process with playing the rest of the game but if you've leveled up and you want to learn new mechanics for bosses for trials that you've not done before the infinite archive is quite good the only difference being that in the infinite archive you get lots of different minor and major buffs and of course depending on how far into the infinite archive you've gotten is going to depend on how difficult it becomes what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to learn to build for survivability after a certain stage so doing high damage in the beginning is a really good way to sprint your way through the uh, first stages of the infinite archive but you will have to respec into becoming a tank eventually or you will need at least another partner now uh, something to note when it comes to the infinite archive is if you are playing by yourself but with a companion it is still classed as duo on the leaderboards the same is said for if you take another player in as well but realistically having another player in is going to be somebody who's independent they're going to be able to make better decisions and you can pick your role of either dps or um, tanking you are given three threads within the infinite archive which means if you die three times or if you and your partner die more than three times that is it the run is over and you will get your final score at the end as you progress through now we are at one of the first bosses that i've actually done in this round so that's us we've completed one cycle as i say and once we've defeated this boss we'll move, be moving on to another set of these arenas so this boss guy is known as tremor scale he is actually from one of the dungeons inside the game um, quite a common boss that most people should know and actually has a pretty good taunt set through his monster helm set which is not bad especially if you use this on an arcanist because the arcanist has an inbuilt taunt within its class so that's actually not a bad headset especially if you're going for a stamina arcanist so once you've defeated the boss guys what will happen is a small chest will appear once this cycle has been completed called a muniment chest and this chest will give you access to infinite archival fortunes the archival fortunes are the main currency within the infinite archive as you've seen earlier on in the shop it will also give you a set piece that you have not collected yet within your sets so what you want to do is you can use this to farm there's particular sets for particular days or particular runs and then you will unlock the ability to do visions you will also get a bit of treasure as well um, that you can sell to a vendor so I'm going to go for the thermatic, um, thermatic boom and what this will do is this will increase my damage by 5% in critical damage now what's very important about visions is these are permanent for your run verses are only temporary for the round but can be very advantageous especially with something like burning aura you get that on a particularly hard boss that uses mostly 
close in uh, mechanics that can be really really good especially if you're using a damage shield and then you got other dots you can really mash through a lot of enemies very very quickly there are many many different verses and visions there are defensive um, assault and utility verses they all do different things some will give you extra gold some will give you new damage types others will increase damage shields or give you a damage shield or even pets that can do different unique things within the infinite archive most of these pets though are only for the current uh, round that you're on as well so bear that in mind although they will be adding in actual proper pets in the future updates of the infinite archive so now we will go and pick our verse i am going to pick the unwilling fortress as i think that is a more superior verse for this and now we are into the next segment the infinite archive is also very random and very unique each playthrough is not going to be the same as last simply because of the randomized visions and verses and also the enemies you will also want to keep out a lookout for an enemy known as the fabled you will also get an achievement for defeating over 500 fabled so keep your eyes out for them even the environments and stages themselves are also randomized in future updates they will be adding new stages that can both uh, afflict you with fire damage and or ice damage and these are going to be two brand new arena types that will be also randomized to a degree and this is just to make things a little bit more interesting i'm guessing most likely that these particular environments will probably be later on within the arcs simply because it's a progression system of difficulty they don't want to make the infinite archive difficult on the back as i say though because of the fact that you have different combinations of visions and verses Sometimes you can get a really good combination and you might actually be able to go through the infinite archive for a very long time. Now, you will see this small portal off to the right here. This is a portal to the unknown. And there are five different versions of these, one of which you, you can only do with a player. So with this one, you can actually turn into a watcher and you have to hunt tome shells whilst avoiding enemies and also hazards within the environment. As you can see, that took most of my health down and there's no real way to actually heal yourself. Now, if you're doing this with another player, which will also be a watch watcher, they will be able to revive you, so long as they don't get taken down themselves. There are different abilities um, given to each key and obviously no ultimate ability. So you can either teleport through or uh, certain things or... Uh, use your weapons and as you've seen I got taken down here so I didn't actually complete this particular challenge keep an eye out though in these areas in particular because there are usually lore books and this can come from anywhere in Tamriel so please bear that in mind so now we're on to our second boss and this boss is relatively easy as you can see he is a minotaur I'm not actually sure which dungeon he is from but he seems relatively okay to deal with. As you progress through the Infinite Archive, and as I've said before, all the bosses are random as well, there are going to be runs, guys, where you're going to come across a boss that is either just too advanced or too powerful and can one-shot you. I would say some of the most difficult bosses that I've found is either certain vampire lords or the dragons. Because the dragons take up about 75% of the arena, any knockback attacks will basically kick you right off the edge of the arena. This is what makes um, certain bosses incredibly difficult, is some of the mechanics are very, very tight and very, very difficult, and if you don't time them right or, or complete them correctly or avoid the AoEs, you will get seriously taken down very, very quickly. So this is why learning the mechanics of how these bosses through the Infinite Archive works and can be very, very handy. You can also get companion weapons as well from the Munimin chests. This is why it's quite good if, that if you're going to go in solo to also take a companion. Remember, if you go in completely solo without a companion, you are playing the game in hard mode. 
it's actually way easier when you have another player in with you, especially both of your sorks, you can have multiple pets, and including the new buffs and pets that are going to be coming out in the future, it's going to be really good. Now when you're in the Infinite Archive, also keep an eye out for urns. Urns have a very good chance of dropping either motifs or diagrams or designs or other things like practices for furniture building. Um, you want to get all of these first before you start the rounds off, then that way at the end of the round you don't forget. If you're in with another player, I would recommend that you let other players know that you're going to be collecting these things, because if one of the players goes through the portal, if you've both picked up a verse or a vision, um, you will both get taken through that portal. So this is why I would say loot whatever you need to loot before picking up your verse or vision at the end of your rounds or cycles and then that way you can avoid losing a lot of loot. Until you've picked up a vision or a verse you cannot be dragged through a portal automatically which is very good. I would also recommend that if you do get the achievement that allows you to get an extra verse then start using your archival fortunes to buy bonus ones, especially for later on in the archive when the difficulty starts to go up. Not all, but some stages will have access to these urns. As well as that, if you have used Gilded Sight, which is one of the abilities that will allow you to do a lot of damage to enemies, and if they die, um, they can drop basically 100 gold each up to a maximum of 1000. And remember, whenever you're in arenas, guys, keep an eye out for books. Books can appear in a lot of different... At the end of this round, I got Flame Aura, which is a relatively good uh, verse to have. It will do continuous damage to any enemies that enter within this area. This is really good if you are playing as maybe a stamina DK. It's really going to help your flame abilities and your damage, which means you're going to rack up a lot of DPS um, through these dots, which is really, really handy. And it also means that you can get through rounds way quicker with buffs like these. Personally, as I am a DPS character, which I don't really adjust myself while I was going through the Infinite Archive, just because I usually just farm Archival Fortunes and go as far as I can go. Um, I enjoy this playstyle personally. You need to find out what makes you comfortable when it comes to playing the Elder Scrolls Online and when it comes to the Infinite Archive in particular because it can be frustrating if you can only get to a certain level as there are a lot of different achievements throughout the Infinite Archive including getting to the very last um, iteration of Thoa Replicanum. When dealing with a boss at the end of these uh, stages, you will be given certain verses. These verses could be something that will help you take down ads quicker or put up your DPS. You need to learn to become very tactical about which verses you use on bosses. If you're quite deep into the Infinite Archive and you are unsure whether or not you are going to need a survivability verse, if you do come across a good one, such as an Exsanguinate, which will allow you to absorb health from your light damage attacks, then I would recommend this, especially from bosses that hit hard or that have a lot of dots, or even better than that, a lot of different adds, such as in this case. I would also recommend that you set your companion to actually be a healer, rather than a tank or DPS, something because you're going to be getting those random ticks of uh, healing over time, which will help keep you alive. Uh, bearing in mind, guys, that companions randomly go through all of their abilities, and if you haven't got a particularly well leveled up companion, you won't have access yet to their ultimate abilities. You might want to consider which companion also is best suited, ability-wise, to operate within the Infinite Archive, as not all companions are made equally. Now let's see what we got inside this chest. We got uh, another blue item to sell, and we will see which visions we have. Attuned enchantments. And what this will do is this will make our enchantments 60% more damage, which is going to be really, really effective with flame damage for my character, even though I am playing as a sword. This will also help uh, with shock damage as well. 
Just a quick reminder guys, if you have been enjoying the video, please like, share and subscribe, it really helps. Don't worry, we're not done yet guys. Just need to do my little bit of shilling for the video. Please leave a comment as well, I want to know what you think of this video and of the Infinite Archive. And even let me know how some of your scores and runs have went. I'm really interested to see how far you've managed to get. How many cycles you've done or how many rounds you've done. You know, and even what uh, ver visions and verses you decided to select and the bosses that you fought. Especially the ones that you found the most difficult. Whilst in the Infinite Archive, you can also speak to the vendor and select whichever things you need along with bonus verses for Archival Fortunes, or you can use it to repair your gear. Now guys, here is the second example of the Portal into the Unknown, which is one of the more interesting ones, where you will get turned into a goat. Now, once you have become this goat in a moment, what will happen is you will have to find sweet rolls whilst avoiding this guy that is chasing you in effect as you can see he fires down dots that will damage you and slow you down so you need to get three of these sweet rolls in order to finish off this particular quest but when you complete these you will get a bonus muniments chest that will allow you to get extra archival fortunes and you will also have the vision uh, or verse should i say that you have picked up before so in this case, I went for Gilded Sight. Gilded Sight will allow you to make up to an extra thousand gold for that round, which is not too bad by releasing little gold piles. Unfortunately, I removed the footage for that, guys, so you will not see that. And now, we are going to move on to the main event. So you will meet Thoat Replicanum multiple times throughout the entire archive, and you will have to deal with this enemy. She is the main baddie in this dungeon system so this is us basically going into the second arc once we've finished taking down this boss now a couple of things to note that this boss is from uh, the Miramor realm or the Athelia realm and she was basically a hint to the new Daedric Prince um, as a Miramor creature now, when it comes to taking on the Thoat Replicanum, there are a few mechanics you will have to understand. She will be able to throw a sword at you, or basically teleport to you while it's putting down shard-like AoEs that will snare you. And she will also fire up a... sort of a wee bit like a watcher, but made out of crystals, that will basically fire a beam at you. And this will do a significant amount of damage to you or your companion if you are caught in between it. Your best bet is to strafe around and circle as much as you can while you're doing your damage. And you will also have to keep an eye out for when she puts up a shield that looks like multiple windows spinning around her. Now when these windows are spinning, which you will see an example of at some point, um, any damage that you do will actually be reflected back at you. So this is a bit annoying if you have obviously pets on, if it's you and another person with pets, because this could also damage you. Um, but as long as you're not putting or applying major dots and doing lots of damage when the shield goes up, you should be pretty much fine and be able to take her out relatively quick. As you can see here, I've learned the mechanics relatively well, so it's unlikely now that I will be defeated for the first iteration, but each time you have to go up to and deal with Thoat Replicanum, things and mechanics will get a bit more complicated and there will be more adds included in. So you have to bear this in mind. This is why eventually you will have to build a tanky build in order to take this character on. It's better to whittle down a boss slowly over a longer period of time than be able to try and take them down with a lot of damage but you're basically a glass cannon that will get taken down if you are not careful in how you execute your rotations. So as you can see I am taking down the boss relatively quickly and my pets are doing a lot of decent damage which is good. And once we are done that, what I will be able to do is I will be able to show everybody exactly uh, how to get the daily quest handed in and the rewards that you will get from it as well, guys. 
tell me about uh, your first time taking on Thor at Replicanum. If you've already been in the Infinite Archive, I'd really like to know how you got on the first time that you actually tried defeating this particular boss, and even how many uh, versions you've managed to take down in total within one run. I would really like to see how far everybody's gotten with that. This boss, as I say, will really test your metal, and it will be uh, not the easiest, but certainly not the most hardest fight that you'll ever have to deal with within the Elder Scrolls Online. So now we've completed the first arc, guys, so what we can do at this point is once we've picked up our immunement's chest, and as you see, we got two in a row, including the last uh, Portal to the Unknown, and you can also get leads as you can see, and we got a little bit more Archival Fortunes because this was a harder boss. So what we're going to do now is we've got an updated set as well for the Monolith of Storms. Now uh, we'll see what vision we're going to have, and it's Powerful Domain or Archival Endurance. Now for me guys, there was no point in me actually picking that up because this is my run done. Now, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the rewards. <coughs> And then th that will be it. We'll be done for the day, guys. So we'll take the payment here. You did and as you can see, we got a uh, Amalogryphic Icar, which goes towards the new mount. And we got an Archival Fortunes box, which gave us an extra 550, which is very, very good. So, guys, if you've been really enjoying this video, uh, remember please like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment and let me know what you think. Um, and when you hit the reset on the hourglass, you'll be taken out of the instance. This has been Crypto Gamer, guys. Have a great day. Peace out.